If the Ukrainian military command hoped that the invasion of the Kursk region would ease the pressure on the Ukrainian armed forces on the Eastern Front, then the Russian Federation's decision probably disappointed them. As Forbes writes, the invaders left their troops on the Eastern Front, throwing young and poorly trained conscripts into the Kursk region. In essence, Russia is trading Kursk for part of Eastern Ukraine. Ukraine is trading part of the East for Kursk. Whether there is any compromise is a political question that does not have an easy answer for either side, the publication notes. The occupiers are currently continuing to advance in the Pokrovsk area. Their infantry entered Novogradovka and even knocked out a Ukrainian tank with a grenade launcher. Pokrovsk is located near the main Ukrainian supply routes of West Donetsk. Even the elite 47th mechanized brigade of the Ukrainian army with two dozen surviving M1 Abrams tanks could not stop the enemy advance. According to the conflict intelligence team, if there is hope for the city's defenders, it lies in significant Russian losses that burden the occupiers. In the Pokrovsk direction, the enemy is beginning to experience a shortage of resources. The number of previous directions has decreased from seven to three in two weeks, the Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies noted. However, even a slow advance is dangerous as the front line approaches Pokrovsk. The publication believes that if this leads to a wider collapse of the Ukrainian defense in the east, Kyiv may regret the start of the Kursk operation. Earlier, deep state analyst Roman Pogoli said that the situation in the Pokrovsk direction is difficult and only getting worse. According to the latest data, the enemy has advanced near Novotoretsk, Mikhailovka, Yasnobrodovka, in Konstantinovka, Novogradovka, and Zeleznoy in the Pokrovsk, Kurakovsky, and Turetsk directions of the Donetsk region. Officer of the 59th Separate Motorized Infantry Brigade, named after Yakov Hanziuk of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Sergei Sekotsky, spoke about the situation in the Pokrovsk area. I know more. I will say less. We can make a very good picture. If everything goes as it should, then the enemy may be in for a very, very ugly surprise for them. But a very good one for us, he promised. Вот, вот танк, вот ствол лежит, а вот башня улетела, я покажу башню, а вот башня. Вот в башне лежит. Вообще жопа, блядь. Пиздец. Тут никому ничем не поможешь. Блядь, вот. Ствол, я понял. Я понял. Я понял. Вот танк. Вот ствол лежит. А вот башня улетела. Я покажу башню. А вот башня. Вот в башне лежит. Вообще жопа, блядь. Пиздец. Тут никому ничем не поможешь. On August 23rd, it became known how many aircraft could have hit the Ukrainian armed forces at the Marinovka airfield in the Volgograd region. The drones were guaranteed to completely destroy two Su-34s, one in the repair area and one in hangar number three. One Su-24 was also blown up in the repair area. They managed to damage two Su-34 fighters and one Su-24. Judging by the damage to the fourth hangar, if there was a fighter there at the time of the attack, it definitely cannot be restored. The military watch analyzes satellite images and photographs of the results of the Ukrainian strike on the Marinovka airfield in the Volgograd region, Su-34, in the repair area, completely destroyed, Su-24 in a malfunctioning state, in the repair area, completely destroyed, Su-34, in hangar number 3, destroyed or damaged, two Su-34s, in hangars number 5 and number 6 damaged, Su-24, in hangar number 7, probably damaged, it is unknown whether the aircraft was in hangar number 4, if so, it was destroyed or damaged.
The media has already noted that the Marinovka Air Base is the only one in the Russian Federation where shelters for fighters were built in 2024, but they serve exclusively to protect against bad weather, and not from missiles, shells and UAVs.